Hi, I'm Bill from CJ Pony Parts. The EcoBoost is obviously a new platform for the Mustang, and so far we're having a lot of fun with our Comp Orange EcoBoost project car. We added an Access Sport tuner so far and an Air Raid cold air intake. One of our more recent mods was a set of Nitz Vincenza wheels. We actually haven't showed you these yet because as soon as we put the wheels on the car, it made our next mod painfully obvious. Our EcoBoost definitely needed an attitude adjustment as far as the height went. So today we're going to move our stock springs and we're going to lower down our EcoBoost using the Sportline kit from Eibach. The Sportline is going to give us a little more of an aggressive drop than the Pro Kit that we recently installed on a GT. The reason we want the Sportline for the EcoBoost is we feel those cars actually sit a little bit higher than the GT factory. We want to make sure we brought it down where we wanted it. The kits can include two fronts, two rears, four new bump stops, and new dust boots for the front struts as well. Here you can see a comparison between stock springs and the EcoBoost. The height difference is enormous. Obviously, it's not going to drop the car that much, but you can see it's a much heavier duty spring than the rear as well. He's doing a great job not only lowering the car, it's going to handle better and be much tighter. For this installation, they had a lift and a pull jack or jack and jack stands, panel removal tool, 17 millimeter wrench, half inch impact gun, 13 millimeter socket, 15 millimeter socket, 18 millimeter socket, 21 millimeter socket, 15 16 socket, 6 inch extension, hammer, and a spring compressor. We recently showed you how to install the Pro Kit on a 2015 GT. Whether you have a GT, EcoBoost, or V6, the installation process is going to be the exact same. In case you missed that video, we'll run you through how to install the Sport Lines on our EcoBoost. Once the wheel's off, we can remove the nuts that hold the strut to the strut tower. One of them is hidden underneath the cover here. We want to take two of these all the way off. The outside one, just leave it loose. We'll start by removing the pieces off the strut itself we need to remove. First one being the sway bar. I'm going to hold the end link from the back and then take the nut off from the front. The ABS line is held onto the strut as well as the spindle. It's easy just to remove both of them so the line's out of the way. Just little clips, put a little tool in there and pop the clip off. To be able to remove the nut and bolt that hold the spindle to the strut, you have to remove the brake caliper to get to these nuts back here. One bolt at the bottom, one bolt at the top. Let's place it back here out of the way on the cam. We're going to take the rotor off as well just because it's kind of in the way. We'll start separating the spindle from the strut by removing these two nuts here. You don't want to take them all the way off. These bolts are splined and have to be hammered out. So we're going to loosen them all the way to the ends and then we'll hammer the splines out. Leaving the nuts on actually serves two purposes. One, it'll stop you from, from rounding off the end of the bolt, making it hard to get the nut back on. And the other, once you hammer it off, the bolt's not going to fly out the front. Now we can separate the strut from the spindle. Now you want to reach up top, grab the strut nut that you left hand tight, remove that, and then remove your strut assembly. To remove the spring from the strut assembly, we have to remove the nut up here and then the strut mount itself. To do that though, you want to compress the spring first. Don't try to remove this because it will launch off at you. Now we can remove the nut from the top of the strut mount, take the strut mount off, and then decompress the spring. Oh. 
iBach includes a new bump stop as well as new dust boots to work with your factory struts. Even though the new spring is much shorter than the factory spring, we still have to compress a little bit to install it. Before you install it though, you want to make sure the IBOC is upward when you install the spring onto the strut. I'm going to put the new bump stop and dust boot into place on the strut. Then we can install our new spring. Make sure the strut is seated in the factory insulator. And our assembly is ready to go back in the car. Now we'll put the strut assembly back into place. You want to slide it up, grab the last nut you removed, that'll hold it on once it's in place. Make sure the ABS line is in the front of the strut and doesn't get tucked behind it. Once it's up in place, grab the other two nuts. Again, put them on just hand tight, enough to hold it in place for you. The strut hanging, we can line the spindle back up, grab the spindle bolts and push them through. Now that's tight, we can reinstall the rotor and the caliper. Reinstall the ABS line clips. And then reinstall your end link. Last step, don't forget to tighten up the nuts on the strut tower. Then we're going to repeat the process on the other side and we can move on to the rears. To install the rear springs, we're going to lower the subframe of the car one side at a time. Before you do that, you want to pull the ABS line off the bracket here and remove this bolt. That'll give us more play with the brake line. And this just pops right off. The bump stop is inside the rear shock, so we have to replace that as part of the installation. We also remove these two bolts to remove the shock from the body to allow the subframe to go lower. To get the bump stop off, we've got to remove the bracket from the top of the shock. This plastic cover, sort of just twist it and pop it, it'll come off. And then remove that nut. This will just slide off the top. We're going to reuse the stock dust boots, so you want to push the bump stop down inside and remove it. The new bump stops are included. We found the opening in these is quite a bit smaller than the one on the factory. You want to use something, a drill bit, whatever, ream this opening out a little bit more to make it easier to get this over the shock. Put it down in the stock boot. I found an extension that works well to push it up onto the mat. Even if you ream it out, it's still a tight fit, which is good. You don't want it to slide up and down too easily. You want to put it onto the shock and then pull it down into place. Now you put the mount back on top of the shock, reinstall the nut.
and then reinstall the cap. We're gonna leave this disconnected, go underneath the car, remove the subframe bolt so we can lower it down to install the spring. We'll start by supporting the subframe, use a pole jack or a jack. Doesn't mean you don't want to just pull off the subframe bolts without it supported and let it drop down because it is rather heavy. Before you work on the large subframe bolts, you want to take these two bolts up here and just loosen them up. Now we can take out the subframe bolt. Now you can slowly remove the rear, making sure the subframe is supported. Now we'll go back to our pole jack and lower down the subframe. Basically get it down to the point where it gets loose and you want to pull down on it a little bit. Now you want to sort of pull down on the control arm and pull the spring out of the upper perch. The rear spring again, same as the front, the Eibach upward, install the factory insulator and put it up into place. You want to put it in from the top, same way you took it out. The control arm has a preset stop for your bottom of your coil spring, but make sure the factory insulator is up against it. When you put the spring in place, you want to turn it until it's touching there. Once you do that, you lift the subframe back into place. I'm going to put the bolts up into place for the subframe. Just get them started by hand and make sure they go in straight. The same thing for the front bolt. Now we can tighten them up. Once they're tight, we can remove our jack. Reinstall the ABS line in the clip. And reconnect the brake line. Last step, push the shock down into place. There's actually two little studs that goes underneath that hold it. Line it up and reinstall the bolts. Repeat the process on the other side and your installation's finished. The Eibach Sportline springs combined with our new niche wheels gives our EcoBoost the perfect stance. The installation leaves will probably take you between two and three hours, so you'll be back on the road in no time. For more installation videos for your 2015 Mustang, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel.